Honey, wear my socks. Honey, wear my socks. Honey, wear. What the? F Hello, good everyone. This is Bionic Slime back again with another installment of BS Reviews. I'm your online voice for reviews of your choice. This time, uh, I got a very special movie for you today, and. I know I say that about a lot of my movie reviews, but this one is quite particularly special, and if you're wondering why, it's because I'm actually in this frickin' movie. No, you didn't hear wrong, don't adjust your speakers or anything like that, I am actually in this movie. You see, the movie I'm talking about is Public Enemies, which, and I don't know if you remember this or read about this, but last year they actually filmed most of the scenes in downtown Chicago, which is where I, near, where I live in Illinois. And thanks to a relative of mine, I actually got cast as an extra in this movie. I got the full 1930s uh, makeover. I got the short haircut, I got the spenders, I got the old-time shoes and shirt and everything. It was really cool and a very interesting experience. Unfortunately, you can't really tell where I am in the film because I'm an out-of-focus blur behind one actress's head in a bar scene where a woman goes to talk about uh, John Dillinger with an FBI agent. So unfortunately, I kind of got shafted in that department, and none of the other uh, extras were listed in the credit. I waited for the whole thing to see. So I kind of got screwed there too, but it was a very interesting experience overall, and I'm glad I actually had the chance to say I was in a movie, and I got the pay sub stick it to prove it, if case anyone doesn't believe me. But so I actually have the rare and unusual honor of reviewing a movie I've actually been in. But anyway, on with the review. As I said, the movie I'll be reviewing today is Public Enemies, which is brought to you by Universal Pictures. It was directed and co-written by Michael Mann, and uh, he co-wrote it with uh, Ronan Bennett. And it stars uh, uh, Johnny Depp as uh, John Dillinger, uh, Christian Bale as FB FBI agent Melvin Purvis, uh, Marion Cotillard, uh, Cotillard, I don't know how to say it right, as Billy Fischetti, uh, Stephen Graham as uh, Babyface Nelson, and Billy Crudup as J. Edgar Hoover. The plot. Taking us back all the way to the 1930s, we see what life was like for the infamous criminal John Dillinger, who makes a habit out of sweeping women off their feet, robbing banks, and making the FBI agents look like idiots. As he goes around Chicago, creating a worldwide crime spree of sorts, escaping the, escaping the law and living life fast and easy, just as he's always liked it. Unfortunately, J. Edgar Hoover hires a brand new agent, uh, known as Melvin Purvis, to clean up all crime in Chicago, starting with public enemy number one, uh, John Dillinger. So after sweeping a, a, coat a coat check girl, Billy Fischetta, off her feet, John Dillinger must now try to make the best of his life as he tries to escape with Billy Fischetti, as well as deal with Melvin Purvis, who must also deal with other gangsters like Dillinger and Babyface Nelson in an effort to clean up crime around town. I'll review the plot. Basically, this movie is a pretty obvious one-trick, uh, clear shot. It's a life about John Dillinger. It's all about him. It's not a real, you know, it's kind of like a biopic, but it's not as detailed as some like something you say to see the biography channel. What's nice about this is that we we don't really start from the very beginning and see what he what Dillinger was like was as a baby or an infant. It's not really that interesting. We know he's a criminal, and we start off when he's during his crime spree. And it's actually really nice that we do that because we get right into the heart of the matter of his stuff, of the content that you want to see about this man. You know, it, it would really bore me just to see a bunch of useless facts about where he grew up, who his mother and father was. And this, we have an idea to see where he was at the prime in his life. And I found that very interesting. We see all of the the adventures and the crime sprees and everything exciting about his life right away. So you already already got a condensed, direct version to the more interesting content about the person. And that's the best way to handle uh, a, a, a life movie about someone, dealing with their the life. It's a good way to show all their interesting points in a, all at once, and it's a very fascinating uh, read. I, I don't know anything about John Dillinger, to be perfectly honest, and I don't know or even care that much really to read up on to see what facts may have been fudged or are inaccurate in the movie. But the point is, is that it really doesn't matter because this movie was very interesting and very engaging. It constantly kept you interested. Very fast moving, just like John Dillinger's life. And it kept you constantly enthralled with his life. And that, to me, shows more, it holds more weight 
than whether the facts are correct. Because the whole point is, while this is supposed to be a movie about someone's life, and you got to be accurate, you also have to make it interesting to watch. And I think that's more important, at least in this case, because I was enthralled to watch, so whether it was accurate or not doesn't really matter to me. I actually cared about what I was watching. And to me, that's that's worth the eight or seven bucks you're paying at the movie show. I'll review the characters. Um, I'm a big fan of Johnny Depp. I love all of his films. I think he does mag magnificent work, and I think people from time to time tend to forget just why he's so great. And I think this movie is a brilliant reminder of just how excellent of an actor he truly is. You know, there's so many reasons why he's regarded as one of the greater actors, and this movie is living proof of it. He does magnificently as John Dillinger. He creates a charismatic, charming, yet complex and engaging character who has a troublesome life, yet he makes the most out of it, and he and his performance truly sells how he feels about everything. You really get a sense of who he is from Johnny Depp's ma incredible performance. I absolutely loved him in this film. He was so much better than I ever expected. He just nails the look, the appearance, the way he talks, and his Charisma just flows out so perfectly. It was ideal casting as Johnny Depp as I loved him. Also, uh, Marion Cotillard, or Cotillard, I don't know how to say her name, and to be perfectly honest, I'm not that familiar with her. I know a lot of people say she's quite famous, but to me, I don't really, I, this is my first time actually seeing her, to, to the best of my knowledge. But she, too, was equally wonderful on screen. She had a great set of chemistry with Depp as Dillinger, and I think they worked very well together. You really got the sense of the connection of their sort of, you know, fast life, doomed, you know, constant fluctuation, danger relationship. A relationship that's constantly flowing up and down, up and down, and she was very convincing in that, Mark. He really felt for her as a person, as a character, and I think she gave an excellent performance as this person who seemed truly emotionally connected to John Dillinger. I felt very moved and touched by her performance. I think she did a great job. Um, I was very surprised to see Billy Crudup as Jericho Hoover. Uh, for, for the first time I remember, I've actually seen him go out of his normal voice, because I've seen him in Watchmen and Princess Mononoke, and his, he always had the same voice, uh, and in Big Fish, but for, for the first time I really saw him break out and actually act like a different person, a different character. And I was really impressed with that. Christian Bale is, is pretty damn good here. Uh, he, he's definitely much better than he was in Terminator Salvation or at least certain moments of Terminator Salvation, I should say. And while he does seem a little restricted, almost wooden-like with some of his mannerisms, he definitely gets the emotion down and the, the mannerisms in his tone down quite right. And that's the key thing. And I was, and though it's not really as appreciated as much, I was really impressed with Stephen Graham's performance as Babyface Nelson. He gave a excellent performance as creating this crazy intense, much more brutal and vicious gangster, which is a nice uh, kind of anti-equal to uh, John Dillinger. That was a nice little play on there. Review of cinematography and music. Music was wonderful, beautiful, really takes us back to that era, that age. The music works just r perfectly with, this, with the story, with the mood. It really, get, it really helps convey the sense of the emotions. And then even the times when there are no music, it knows when to use it and when not to, and when which ones enhance the scene, and which ones get the right effect you want from someone. I was very impressed with that. Cinematography was actually so much better than I expected. See, I knew this was a, a, a period film, but the way the camera is shot is so done, so realistically, so intensely, so documentary-like, you can't even tell almost. I mean, the costumes all give it away, but the movie is shot in a, such a realistic fashion that to me, I felt it was just like I was living back in there, like I was in that time. I felt right in there thanks to that, and I was very impressed with that. I thought that was an excellent job in really getting us knee-deep in the film and not feeling too disconnected f because of the era change. Flaws about the movie. Um, as I said, John Dillinger mentions in his life uh, and about his, you know... His, way he's being raised, everything's fast. You know, live for today, die for tomorrow. You're not thinking about tomorrow. It's only about today. Well, that works in the movies, but not really in the sense of pacing. This movie does move very quickly, and I think that's one of the major problems is that the pacing kind of seems to go a little too quick sometimes. He's living a very fast life in a very fast movie where it's two hours long, so they go through things very quickly, and it's kind of annoying because uh, it'd be nice if they just slowed down at least a little bit just so we can get ahead of everything. I think the main reason that this bothers me is because most of the actors and the characters in there get kind of pushed aside, and you can't really remember who the hell that guy is or, or even remember whose name 
because they don't really take the time that thing to go around and get enough airtime for everyone. Uh, final wrap up: Public Enemies is a fantastic movie that I think Michael Mann uh, has done some of his best work here. I've seen from his films I've seen. I really was impressed here by uh, the scenery, the cinematography, and the music. I absolutely loved Johnny Depp. He was fantastic. Um, Christian Bale did a good job. Uh, Marion Cotillard Cattil- is Billy Fischetti. All good. I love Stephen Graham with Baby Fitz Nelson. There was so much, so good. There's so much good stuff around here. It's a really good movie. Very interesting. I highly recommend it. It is violent, but I think it's a great movie that everyone should see of all ages, young and old. Bottom line, I give Public Enemies four stars out of five stars. Well, thank you all for listening. This has been Bionic Slime for BS Reviews, and bye for now.